Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you all again on this Twinkle Tip Friday. It is October. It is the season to get ready for Halloween or you're, you're running your Halloween shows. A lot of people are already running their shows. But I wanted to share something fun with you this week on singing faces for your matrix and how you can create your own by being creative and learning just a little bit of basic tools in some different, uh, in, a, in a basic uh, image editing software. Now I'm gonna get started right now, so hang on. Welcome back guys. Look, I thought this would be a fantastic idea to do a special treat on how to create your very own faces using images in X lights to create singing faces for your matrix panels. And I had this idea that maybe I could use a, a cute witch or something, something for Halloween. We did something similar to this last year, but I didn't show you how to make the faces, but I, I wanted to do that this time. This is gonna be a little bit more of an in-depth video. It's not gonna be 100% about X lights. It's actually gonna be a lot of uh, photo editing that I use Paint 3D for. Now, I was online here earlier today and I found this cute witch here and I thought this witch would be perfect. Uh, I, and I'm gonna walk through the process of cutting this image out in Paint 3D and walk through the process of creating the actual lip movements or the phonemes that are necessary that x -Lights is going to look for. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the face that I downloaded and uh, we're gonna start by removing the background. Now I am using Paint 3D. I use this every day, multiple times a day. When I'm sequencing, this is the, this is the, the program that I use to get the images and to remo remove backgrounds and so forth. So um, in any event, to get the background out of this, it's very simple. I just do magic select and I'm gonna try to get rid of everything that, see there, the white, I'm gonna try to just get that outline of the white there and everything else we want to keep. So let's go ahead and see if it picks it out, and it did. And this is kind of an automatic thing. This is why I like Paint 3D, it's super easy. So now we'll go ahead and click the Done button. And this is a rather big image. Whenever you download these from some of the uh, different uh, creators that are on FreePick, uh, FreePick is that website that we're, uh, that we're part of, uh, we have a, 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 a subs subscription to it in order to be able to use other artists' work and uh, be able to continue distributing it. It's a legal way for us to do that without me having to start from scratch and create something. So now I've got the face, I can click on it and move it. Uh, and it's, it's in Paint 3D, this is called a 3D image now. Now the, the next thing I need to do is I need to delete the background. So I'm just clicking and dragging, I'm hitting the delete key. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out the size that we are going to apply this witch's face Two, whenever it comes to putting on uh, a mega tree or a matrix. Now we're going to do a matrix, but a mega tree would be done the same way. Remember that a mega tree is a tall, skinny matrix. It's a, it's much more taller usually than it is wide. And a, uh, like a P10, uh, a television screen, a um, virtual matrix, a garage door. Those typically are wider and not as tall. So keep that in mind. We're going to design this witch to work on a P10 panel, but also make it so that we can maybe shrink it down and put it on the garage panel. And if we're lucky, if we're, if we're fortunate, uh, we should be able to use them on both. But the, the challenge is, is that when you're doing this on a high definition matrix, you do tend to lose some of your high definition quote unquote look so be prepared for that. You'll see that as we progress through building the rest of this model. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and go into x -Lights. We're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna find out the size that we need to kind of make our image. And I'm gonna use two different methods. So generally, whenever I'm doing pictures, especially for the P10 panel, what I usually do is I take the height and the width and multiply it by four. Now, I know the, the height and the width of my, um, of, and I'm opening up the calculator here. I know the width of my uh, P10 panel is roughly 128, but if I just say 125, 125 times four is 500. 
Now, if I, I know the height is roughly 100, uh, is, a, is 96, so I usually say it's 100. So usually, whenever I make an image for my P10 panel, I usually make it at 500 wide by 400 tall. Now, in this case, I'm not going to because I wanted to transpose down to the garage matrix, which is down here uh, on the bottom right of the screen. And the reason I want to follow this definition a little better, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to multiply the height and width by four, is because I want, it to, I want it to be as good as it can be on the small one, so I know that it's going to look good on the big one. Now, that doesn't promise, because we are multiplying it by four, it doesn't promise that it's going to be perfect on the little one, but it should do the job. It, would be, it should be enough. If you really want to have the best outlook for a small matrix panel, or a, you know, like a window panel or something, you need to physically draw the image into the exact screen size that your pixel count is. In this instance, the garage matrix would be 50 by 24 tall. And that's all the bigger you would make the matrix and you would sit there and as you'll see as we do the images, you can click on the dots to, make the, uh, to fill in the colors for the picture. But I'm doing it at four times the size so I know that it will shrink down, it will scale to the smaller size. So in the garage, again, it's, five, uh, it's 50 pixels wide times four, that's 200, so 200 wide, and then the height is 24, we're gonna round up to 25, and four times 25 is 100, so it's a 100 by 200 matrix. So let's go into, um, let's go into the image here, and we're gonna start uh, setting this size up so that we can get that size right. I'm gonna get a total rough pixel count of, and I'm gonna go click on the canvas button here, and I'm going to unlock it and resize. I'm going to I'm going to change my width from uh, 50 wide. It's going to be 200 wide, which makes that way smaller. And then we have a height of uh, 100 tall. And I'm going to zoom in. Now notice how big the image was. It's very. This is a very high definition image. And I'm just going to shrink it down now so that it fits on that little background. Now the other thing I'm going to do is we've just removed the background off of this matrix panel, right? What uh, another suggestion that I have is is that we, we save this image in um, in a transparent mode. So if you go back to canvas there and you go to transparent mode, I turn it on and then we save this as a PNG. Then that's going to make life way easier for us. Now, one thing that we have to do is we have to create the base image of the witch um, so size the witch up the where to where you uh, where her face is going to fit and that's where she's going to um, be that's where she's always going to be on your matrix panel um, you could I, I mean if you wanted to you could do split screens and do two faces at once but uh, uh, but we're, we're only going to work with one um, there's easier ways to do that with just one image. The next thing I want to do is I want to give some color. If we use black, black is not going to show up on a matrix, so I'm going to change some colors on her so that we make sure that we have a good um, we have a good definition. And I'm going to use this brown here. I'm going to go to brown here. I'm going to make it a little darker brown. And then I noticed that I like these black lines. They, they work a little bit better. I'm going to close off. I'm going to close off these uh, very specific. Oh, I'm going to close off these very specific uh, connection points so that whenever we use the fill or the paint bucket tool, and I'm not being 100% accurate, but like I'm not being 100% uh, perfect with these. I just don't want her hair to be brown. She doesn't need brown hair. The black hair will look good, trust me. Just trust me on that. So so now what I'll do is I'll switch to this tool, we'll fill it in, and look her hair and her face outlines all stayed the same. We got a brown hat um, and she's got a purple underneath of her hat. That looks good. I think that's fine. And so what we'll do now is we're going to do menu and we're going to save as, and I always save this as a 3D project. I'm going to call this which. All right, now that we've got it saved, the next thing I want to do is I want to turn her into a sticker and, and make her so that she can't move around here in the background, right? This is the hard part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you, you've centered her, you've got her set up, I'm going to make her into a sticker 
and look what happens. This is see this is what happens whenever you have a high density prop uh, or a high density um, image rather, and it turns really, really, really mechanical, uh, really kind of JPEGy all around the edges. So you lose a lot of your definition. Unfortunately, that's just what happens whenever you work with some of the basic images, and this is why I highly suggest especially if you are doing small images that you have a basic image and not a high definition image that's why I left those little black lines in there that's there's a reason for there's reasons for doing all that so I've just stamped her face there that's her final image and I am going to um, uh, leave it as that we'll go ahead and let's clean this up just a little bit it's gonna take me a minute to clean it up And I'll probably fast forward through some of this, but uh, all I'm using is the uh, color dropper here. I'm picking the color that's here, and I'm dropping it here. And this is her mouth. I, I actually like her mouth the way this, this is here. We'll go ahead and use black and put this here. We're going to pick this green color here, and we'll go around the mouth here. Because we're going to do a lot of mouth work. Okay, so one of the things that I want to do now is I want to copy and paste those eyeballs from left to right here. And there's a very good, easy way to do this. And to, to do this, I'm going to select, and I'm just going to grab where the eyeballs are. Now, now I'm grabbing a corner of the mouth there. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to right click, we can copy this, and now we can right click and we can paste this. And this is what's fun about Paint 3D is we can flip the image right there's a little flip flip and rotate and we can put it over here and do the same exact amount of work over on this side that we did on the other side without having to do all the drawing that's a lot a, a little I guess a little secret tip that you can you can kind of use now we'll fix up the nose here well we don't have to fix the nose the nose looks pretty good we'll go ahead and select it as well and we can copy it, control C, flip it, and uh, oh. so we can paste it. We already copied it, we'll paste it, control V. We can flip it now, oh. and we can move it over here. And now we have a, a, a kind of perfect nose. I don't want to say perfect. Maybe we fill this in with uh, the green um, here and do this. There we go. That looks pretty good there. I like her cheek over here. We'll select her cheek and we'll grab, for reference, we can grab straight over to the nose there. And so we know that we're going to copy this here and we can paste it. Right click, paste, flip horizontally. There we go. Line up that bottom piece there with the nose and boom. And we can do the same thing with the mouth. I think the mouth uh, would would work just fine to um, have selected like this. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Control C, Control V, flip horizontally. We'll move it over here. And it looks like all of this needs erased here. So what we'll do is we'll just fill it in with green since we can do that real quick. That's like super easy. So now I've got, now I've got a perfect mouth that I can play with and move around with. Uh, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of these colors and make the, the rest of the image a little bit nicer.
Well, I hope that that process right there just kind of showed you cleaning up the image, uh, just trying to make it look a little better. You could see I, I made some arbitrary decisions like, like, oh, look here, do I make these, do I add these in? The thing is, is that if I don't fix these little bits around uh, the uh, around here, that sometimes those pixels will turn actually turn white. Uh, or they'll well not these ones but uh, the ones around the edges there uh, and and that might cause some uh, some bit of of highlighting that you don't want to happen and I, it's 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 insistent I have to go fix these because I know that I'll get a better quality image as long as the base image like the, this is the base image now as long as the base image is is kind of well sorted so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna save this again save as 3D image, which two? So I always have the original, the other one that was in 3D, and then I have this one here that's shrunk down and it's in this format. Because here's the thing, if I want to make this bigger, I could make this for a higher definition screen. It will turn out really good for a higher definition screen, but but uh, basically this is this is kind of our base format. And so now we need to go in and we need to select our mouth and begin working on our mouth movement. So this is where I'm going to bring X lights in. And if I bring X lights in, I'm going to show you if you go into the faces description, I have the matrix selected there. Let's go into the faces description and we look at the face definition. So these are the mouth movements that we're going to try to create as best as possible in order to make the, the witch look like she can talk. So we have to create an AI mouth, an E, the etc., the FV, the L, the MBP, all of these. We're going to create all of these are really simple. And then we've got to make her blink. So we have to give her some eyes open and eyes closed, which is really simple. So I'm going to leave this. I'm going to move this off of the screen for right now. And we'll go ahead and open that back up. And that way, I can always have this open off, uh, off of my monitor here. I can have this off to the side telling me, oh, this is what the A mouth should look like. This here, to me, is what I would consider the AI mouth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm physically going to copy this mouth. I'm going to select it, click and drag. And I'm going to copy this, Control-C. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit... Control V to paste it, and I'm going to make it into a 3D image. Now, I'm going to have to do some image work here because at this point, this witch's face, this mouth, needs to have a clear background so that I can do some changes to her to the to the to the mouth without having to work really really hard to do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase her mouth and to do that I could I could erase it by using the erasers but I can also click and drag and select over and then just erase it this way this is the faster way to do it let's go ahead and start editing this image here this little face movement and we need to do this very easily with the brushes tool and we'll hit the erase key here and we'll get rid of anything that isn't part of her mouth. All right, so there she is. We got her mouth movement, and this is supposed to be her AI mouth, right? So now what we can do, since we have her, rest, her, 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 her face, one of the things that we're gonna need to do is we're going to take another save we're gonna save this again I'm mm. gonna save this now as, as as a template here okay and the reason why I'm saving it as a template here is because I don't have to touch her face pretty much anymore like the the whole her, her whole image is done we just need to work with the mouth movements so let's go ahead and place this mouth a little bit more uh, pronounced and I like whenever I do the AI mouth I like to have the AI mouth really tall and open because ah is your jaw is open right so we'll go ahead and draw that out and I just stretched it up and down just like that that's that's the that's the AI movement to me, right? So what we'll do now, we're going to save as an image, and we're going to call this a PNG. And now I'm going to physically go into my XLights directory here. Um, 
and save. We're in my uh, pro layout directory here. Actually, yeah, let's let's go. Actually, let's go into the moving head layout directory. And we'll go ahead and create a new folder. We'll, I'll call it faces. And I'm going to go into this folder. I'm going to call this um, which. And then I'm also going to call this underscore AI. And then I'm going to call it underscore IO or eyes open. And then I'm going to leave it as that. Now, uh, th we're going to we're going to use this exact same nomenclature, this underscore AI underscore IO for eyes open. Oh, 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 I said IO. It should be EO. Sorry about that. We'll go ahead and click save. And now we have, if we go back open that image, I'll go find that real quick. Uh, well, this, these are the singing pumpkins. You can see the you can see how all of those are set up. If you follow this nomenclature, it goes in smooth like butter into X slice. But the idea here is, is that we're going to continue making faces using this mouth that's already created or generating a brand new one that we haven't created just yet. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and uh, so next we need so next we need to do the E mouth. Now the E mouth to me is a bit wider. Let's squeeze it together here. And if we kind of look here, we see uh, we see that, that that looks kind of like an email. I think that, that'll work. We'll go ahead and click Save As. We'll go back to Image, Save, and then up here we'll go to, uh, we'll click on this, and then we'll just change the AI from AI to email. Now, if you if you have a hard time remembering this, it says which underscore e underscore e o. If we go back to X lights, X lights will tell you what that file name should be. So it's going to look for the e. It's going to look for lowercase etc. That's the next one we'll try to do. Um, and I'll go ahead and click save here. So I, I want to I I, I want to go and I want to open this up real quick. And the reason why I want to show you this is because if we actually open up the e -mouth, let's see if there's anything in here that changes when we did the e -mouth. Now, notice how not as pretty the mouth is. So what we can do is we can doctor up this image later on in post-production, I guess you could say, and we can make it a prettier image where this is more filled in black, where we have more of a, a, a defined uh, face for her so that it, it actually looks nice and clear. If you don't do that defining sometimes, it won't come out as nice. And, and truthfully, if you do use a higher resolution image, uh, you don't have to worry about this hazing or this, this JPEG-ness uh, that you see. But it is, it is going to work for us. We'll go ahead and just keep going and keep working out some of these things here for the faces. The third face is an ETC mouth right there. That's where it's real close together. We could push this a little closer together. And I like to go like this and give it like kind of a, a real squinched kind of uh, movement. And that to me usually signifies the e, uh, ETC movement. I'll go ahead and save that, save as, image. And we'll call that lowercase etc and then we need to make the the next one's going to be uh, FV so to me FV is a little bit different um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw the FV mouth and I'm going to return more towards the uh, more towards this mouth right here and I'm going to have her pinch her lip together. Now, we're going to make this into a sticker again. Um, I'm going to copy this, Control-C, Control-V, and move this off the screen. And I'm going to, uh, well, well, we'll save that for off the screen. And now, since I have this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this as a sticker. Let's go ahead and try this here. And what we'll do is we need to make it look like she's pinching her lip. And we're going to have to draw some. So let's draw a little bit here.
All right, that there to me is an FV mouth. Now, I, I saved this for later. I'm going to move this down here. Let's move this down here. And the reason, I, uh, the reason I'm moving that down there is I'm going to use that later, but I need to save the image without the uh, 3D model sitting there. So we'll do menu, save as, and this is going to be image, save, and we're going to change this to FV. Okay, we've got the FV mouth finished. Let's go ahead and do the L mouth. The L mouth shows that she's got like a tongue there, and uh, it looks like it's raised up more. It's not. It's not like at the bottom of her mouth, like uh, like you see here. Another thing that we can actually do, we can go back and we can open up the AI mouth to start with. Let's do that because I think that that might be faster. Here, I'll just. I've got it right here. I'm going to open up the AI mouth. And we're going to save the AI mouth as something different. So here, it's already done, right? This is the AI mouth. Oh, we probably should clean this up. Let's go ahead and clean this up. I'll put this on fast forward while you watch me do this. Okay, that looks like a good AI mouth. We'll go ahead and save it again, save it, and then we're going to save it as, file, save as. We're, we're going to save this as the L mouth. And so now we have a duplicate. We have an exact duplicate. Here's the AI we fixed, and then here is the L mouth. And I'm going to, again, um, Look at how the L mouth is set up. It's set up with doing something similar to this with it, where it's closer together. It, the L mouth looks like the AI mouth, uh, but it has the tongue lifted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in with the black, and I'm going to fill in the lower jawline here. And since her tongue is purple... We'll utilize that purple tongue, but we're going to we're going to draw it back here. Now, again, see how they have a bit big in the middle, little dot off to the side there. We'll we'll draw that. We'll we'll do that exact same thing. So we'll say draw from here over, and then we'll have a big. I don't know. I don't want to call it a big tongue, but and now we'll fill in with black. So again, I'm not perfect at making these, but um, but that is kind of like what the L mouth might be. Um, maybe this needs to be a little bit closer together. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of select it and move it up a little bit. There we go, and then I'll fill in this here there we go. Oop. Well, that works. I think that that's a, a little bit more realistic L mouth. It's it's slightly different. We'll save as, save image as the L mouth. So there's our L mouth next. Uh, we'll go ahead. Yes, we'll replace it. The next thing that we need to do off of our other face here is we need to do the uh, rest or the MVP where she goes. Mm. Um, basically. That is a single line. Uh, let's go ahead and do some basic. Sh we could do a basic shape. Let's see if we can grab a shape here. Um, uh, that's really thick. Let's see if it goes thinner. There we go. Oh, it's that's that's kind of what we want. And she doesn't have to be a happy witch. We could make her a happy witch. Um, There we go. We just zoomed out there, and we'll we'll just place that down. And now she's got these two little teeth marks, and we'll go ahead and add those in. And those are pretty easy to draw. It looks just like well, three three white lines and a, a four, three or four uh, white lines here. Do this, do this, and this, and this, and that. There we go. That that'll kind of simulate her um, her mouth in the uh, rest position there. 
and we'll go ahead and save this save as image save and we'll select this and, we'll, we'll, and I'm just doing that to get the the whole thing there where I can just change one letter in this file save and this is uh, the we'll call this the MBP and I want to make sure I spell it in the correct order it's M B P so that's we make sure you do that right okay next we'll go in and we'll click the save this creates the new image uh, now we need to do another one which is the O the U and the WQ and then we're home free those three are actually really the easy ones um, to make the O mouth you can see it's really wide and open and um, to make the rest mouth it looks like a little smile now notice how the mm is like the whole width of the jaw um, whenever you have a rest mouth the rest mouth seems to be smaller and it's in an upright position I'm not gonna do that uh, I think what we'll do is we'll take the uh, the MBP mouth and we'll make it a little bit more scrunched together so it's not as wide um, and we will make it a little bit we'll make it a little different right so let oh. So what we'll do is we'll select, I'm going to bring this a little bit closer, one, two, one, two, and then we'll do the same thing here, one, two, and now I'm going to draw a little bit. Uh, let's go in and we'll save this as what do they call that they called it rest and rest is in lowercase so we'll save as image save and we'll change this to rest save boom we got that rest saved next we'll go in and we'll go ahead and make the O mouths so again this is off the screen this is this is always here for us to kind of remember and we can grab the color for her tongue there but we're going to go ahead and we're going to erase uh, this uh, color here we can click and drag and hit the delete key uh, and fill these in and now we can start drawing the O mouth now an O is really easy to draw uh, we just need the black and we just need to make uh, we just need to make it in the shape of an O. So that looks like the O mouth. We'll go ahead and come down here and we're going to get the color of her tongue off of there. So I say that looks like a pretty good O mouth. and of course we can always double check to make sure that we did it right so I have a capital O which O and now the nice thing is is that in order to make the smaller faces or the O the U and the WQ you can take it directly from the O mouth so the O mouth is the widest the biggest O that you can make the next widest is your U which now is a little bit more scrunched so I have a wide O here I can scrunch it a little bit together and to do that all we have to do is do select and move it in one and do select and move it in one and then we go back here we can fill in with our color green there we have oops it filled that other in so we'll just draw that black into there uh, right there boom uh, it needs to be tall so you know what we'll do we'll get rid of some of the black and make it green that'll make this the mouse smaller um, there we go that should do I think that's enough to do the U mouth save as image save and select this and we'll call this the U make sure that that's correct that is the U capital U save 
and now we will do the WQ, which is where it's scrunched and up a little bit even more. So to do that, let's go ahead and select these here and move up, up, and let's fill in with the green. There we go. Looks like I lost the bottom there. We'll grab that purple and put the bottom back in there. Oop. There we go. And then we're going to make the mouth a little bit more narrow. Uh, and to do that, I'll just draw it the way that I think it needs to be. A little bit more narrow here. And that to me looks pretty good. We'll go ahead, menu, save as. And it needs to be called WQ. All right, so there you have your image. Uh, all your images are done except for one image. We have to go back to the rest mouth, and we need to open that back up. And the reason that we need to do that is Xlights uses the rest function to blink the eyes. There is, there is the option to create all of these images with a closed eye option, but I've never found it effective. It's a lot of extra work. Um, so what I just do is whenever she's in the rest position, uh, we'll go ahead and open that image and I'll show you how easy it is to make her an eyes closed movement. So we're, uh, we're on the rest, eyes open, E-O, we're on the rest, and this is as easy as it is. So we'll just uh, grab the color picker here and make it a little smaller because we're on a different image and we'll just go whoop, color uh, this there we go oops there we go and there we go we'll just erase it's it's like we're erasing her upper and lower parts of her eyes now don't hit save you have to hit save as because we have to change the name so we'll go to images and we'll, where it already says rest, we're going to change this from EO for eyes open to EC for eyes closed. That gives us the exact same image, but with the eyes closed. And um, I might be able to zoom in. Windows might let me zoom in here. So if you see, there's, there is the rest eyes open and there's the rest eyes closed. You can see they all look pretty, uh, pretty natural and normal. And I think that's everything we need. So let's go in to X lights. Well, we were we were actually already in X lights. Uh, let's go in and here's the faces dialog for the matrix and we'll go ahead and we'll click add and we'll click add for which. We'll go ahead and click OK and um, let's go ahead and get these in here. Now to get them in here you just Click on, I always click on this one down here, and then I double click on this one here. The AI is the first one that we always do, or I always do rather. And now I'm going to go into where to put those moving heads. Um, I actually put it in Christmas, but whatever. Uh, here's the, did I put it in there? Faces. And here's our witch. Now, now notice how it says up here, choose image for mouth, and it says AI eyes open. It's looking for the AI eyes open image. It knows to put all of the EO or the eyes open in the eyes open column. If I double, if I select this, click open, boom, it auto filled all of those in. Now, sadly, whenever you click on these, it doesn't show the image over here, but that's okay. We're going to go into X lights here in a few minutes and we're going to have some fun with it. Uh, but the other one that we need to bring in is the eyes closed. And if we come down here to the rest and we double click on the rest eyes closed, we can go find that one. Here's that EC, and I'll go ahead and click on it. Now you notice that it has the eyes closed. Again, like I said, you could do eyes closed on all of these. Not a problem. You can go back and have all of those images. I never found it super particularly helpful, uh, but it is an option for you. All right, let's move on to the uh, big matrix panel because we made these for the bigger matrix panel, but they should work on the smaller matrix panel after we've done some editing. 
Uh, let's go in and click on the faces, which you can't see. It's behind me. We'll move it in your way so you can see it. We'll click Add. We will go in and call this witch. And we will select, double click. Boom, there's our list. AEO, there we go. AIEO, there we go. That matches. Click open. Boom, just like butter, smooth as silk. Then we'll go in and get the rest mouth next. Double click on just the rest. I'm sorry, the rest mouth with the eyes open, or eyes closed rather. EC, eyes closed, PNG. And we'll click open there. And so now those are filled in. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, I've already taken the time to load a, uh, a sequence up in here. Now, I'm not going to play the audio, but uh, the, the, you can see I've got uh, two matrix effects here. We'll go ahead and click on those, and I'll activate them. And I've already got them set here to which. And then uh, I've got this one on the big uh, P10 panel here, which uh, right there. So if we have those stretched out there to the same, and we'll just hang on to those, and let me go grab the preview. And you'll be able to see there's our witches, and they are actually doing a pretty decent job at moving to the, the voices of the music there. So if I play them, you can see them babbling a little bit there. You can see there's some lyric tracks there for them to read. There's some here too. But they d actually do a really good job of transposing. Now, you can't see all of the high definition here in this witch, but you can still tell that she's a witch, and it's still a reasonable image. Now, if you wanted to do a better image, you would do it on a smaller matrix panel, where we were doing a 100, uh, a, we were doing a 200 wide uh, by uh, 100 tall uh, image, matrix image. That was four times the size of this image, uh, or this matrix, rather. Now, you could cut that down to a 24 tall by 50 wide and actually plug in those pixels and make the witch look a little bit more specific. But as you can see, they do transpose over and they actually look pretty good. Like they're, they're doing it. They're singing right along with the, with the lyric tracks. Uh, it, it, the, the mouth movements are pretty crisp and clear, especially on the P10, because we made it to fit that. Um, and yeah, it does a good job. Look, and it looks like she's singing right along with the song. Well, guys, that's everything for me here at Pixel Pro Displays. I better hurry up and get this edited before it becomes a Twinkle Tip Saturday video. Sorry, this was really long. Actually, I'm not sorry. I've actually wanted to do this video for a very long time. And uh, I attempted to do it last year, but I just I didn't have the time to spend doing it. And today, well, you, you might have suffered because you get your Twinkle Tips almost on Saturday, but you're getting them. And hopefully you have a wonderful weekend, guys. It has been great going over this. If you are into the intricate work, the detail work, the programming work, then this is the kind of thing that you might live for. I really enjoy doing work like this. This is a lot of fun for me. But I understand that it's not a lot of fun for everybody. So take it with a grain of salt. Do what you can do. But at least it's another skill. It's another tool for in your toolbox. It's another way to become a little bit more proficient and making programming just a lot more personalized and special for your holiday display. So that's everything for me, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the weekend. I hope that everybody's show goes off really well without any hitches. And I'm wishing you all the best. If you like what we do, give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet. So hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget... There's a notification bell. Hit, hit that so that you never miss Twinkle Tip Friday video, our webinar videos, which I've got to put one of those up coming up this weekend, and all of the other videos we put up here at Pixel Pro Displays. And if you appreciate what we do, join the PPD Sequence Club, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you again. We will see you in the next video. Take care, and goodbye for now.